Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's ready to love season four, the season finale. I give a full episode recap with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around, I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. It's the big day that's important for everybody. It's when Vernicia introduces Joelle to her immediate family. Her stepfather, which pretty much raised her since she was a young child, her mother, and her eldest daughter. Joelle arrives, you can tell that he's very shy, but very anxious to meet the family. The family jumps right in. Like, how do you know you're ready? And what's your intentions with my daughter? Which makes Joelle blush, but they get right into it. He's very open and honest in telling Venetia's stepdad that my intentions are good, I mean well, she's a great person, a little bossy, and the mom laughs about it and says, yeah, she gets that from me. And the stepdad says, hey, can you handle all of the attitude? But Joelle says, you know, I don't see it really as attitude. I see her as very confident in everything that she wants. We had a little tip for tabs, but we we're able to kind of go through it. And also they ask questions about Joelle and how he feels about joining an already made family and he says that he doesn't have a problem with that it's something that he had a conversation with his wife who passed on saying that you know I want my children to be around love and I want my children to be around family and while we're speaking about that how do you feel about bringing my children in into the family and Renicia's family tells him that they are welcomed we like you and it's all about the children and being able to merge two families together we're not the type of family to show anyone away so it's a good thing and they're all happy about it they shake hands they hug and they all admit that they like Joel and they love his energy and the eldest daughter does say this is the longest we've heard our mom talk about a man in a very long time now it's time for Jason to meet Liz's immediate family members. She's invited two of her sisters and a brother-in-law. She tells them, feel free to just ask any questions, be comfortable, but just don't, you know, question him to death. Like, you know, chill, don't scare him away. Jason says in his production clip that he's excited to meet family, but family will be family. They might grill you. They may just not even like you, but he's prepared for the worst just in case. He arrives and sees that the family kind of mean mugs him when he walks in. It's kind of like this defensive wall up but he goes through he says hello to Liz and slowly starts to introduce himself to family members and Liz helps as soon as he sits down they can sense that his energy is genuine and happy they start off with a quick question but before they begin Jason says have we prayed over the table have we prayed over the food yet and they're impressed and they all join hands and Jason says a prayer for the table which gives him kudos because the family is Christian oriented and they feel like that is a major step in respect and setting the mood for conversation. The brother-in-law just jumps in and says, okay, well, what's your favorite scripture? And Jason says, well, my favorite scriptures are, of course, Matthew 13, that chapter, just discussing everything about being the sower of seeds and Psalms 27, you know, how it explains to just be fruitful and how God will never leave you and all of the information. And the family is just really, really impressed that he's being genuine. And even one of the sisters is like, is he for real? Real? Is this for real? And Liz is like, yeah. Liz is so giddy and happy and she can't stop smiling. And the family notices that she can't stop smiling. And it comes a time where Jason has to leave. He gives the hugs. The brother-in-law gives him dabs saying, you know, it was really nice to meet you. And they really, really like Jason. So it was a good dinner. Chris has invited Amber to meet with his brothers and they're shooting some pool, trying to relax. And when she arrives, they say hello, but you can already tell there's this defensive wall up, but that's okay, because brothers do that, right? One of the brothers wants to know, just going straight in, why hasn't anyone scooped you up yet? You're 31, you got your head on straight. I mean, you got your career. I mean, what's going on? Is there some type of character flaw that we need to know about? Is something that Chris needs to know about? And she rephrases the questions and says, well, do you mean why haven't I allowed a man to get me yet? And they say, oh, okay. And they ask another question. 
is it real is everything that's going on is it real amber says the reality is that we are in a legitimate process we're talking to each other on the phone on a regular basis we text each other we're having very transparent conversations therefore our connection is very real we are dedicated in learning one another and and allowing things to just evolve as they grow the brother you can tell he's really defensive of his brother chris and he's just being very guarded but he's asking really in-depth conversations and he says look i love my brother and i love your answer but it seems very familiar of someone last season who said the same game who was saying the same stuff and amber says look it's genuine but i can show you better than i can tell you you know i'll put my money where my mouth is this is me and this is just what I give. This is just who I am. And I mean everything that I say. Amber says in a production clip that their questions, she doesn't take offense to that. It's just them being the protective brothers that they are. And she can understand that. And Chris says in his production clip that he loves how Amber is always cool, calm, and collected. She's straightforward, a straight shooter with her answers. And he loves the fact that he, that she has his back at all times. Kyra has her mother over and her friend, Corey. She tells them that, you know, before this person comes over, I want you to meet this person. I do have concerns about how they can handle me. So make sure that you kind of take it easy and not to, you know, but the mom says, we'll take it gentle. We'll, we'll try, you know, but yeah, I don't know. Not making any promises. AJ arrives and she introduces him to everyone. And everybody's like, oh, so you're AJ. Oh, okay, come on, come in. And ask you some questions. And Corey gets straight to it. And she says, look, go ahead and take you a sip of some wine, some true serum, because I really want to ask you an important question. What do you think Kyra wants? AJ says, I think we have a lot of the same interests. So we're still learning one another. And they just keep going on with the questions. I mean, bow, bow. Wow. And AJ says in his production clip, he feels like he's being, in, you know, interrogated. It's the episode of First 48. So if there's a bead of sweat dripping down his forehead, it's because he feels the pressure, but he's going to keep at it. They're asking him, is he romantic? How is the relationship with his mother when there's an argument? How does he handle that? I mean, just straightforward, just straight shooter. But AJ says, you know, when it comes to an argument, I'll just make sure to listen first because it's important that we understand what we're discussing. And the mom says, that's a good point. That's a really good point. And I like how you answered that. The mother wants to know, okay, if things get serious between you two and you leave right now with one another, what are the next steps? And AJ says, to be honest, I really don't know the next steps. I really don't know what's going to happen. And the mother acknowledges that she likes his emotional honesty and that he's not holding that back. But the friend is saying, you know, I just really don't feel a connection here. And I feel that both of you guys' representatives haven't met the real each other yet. And it feels like there's nothing there. There should be some fire that's ignited. And I don't even think y'all are on warm yet. It doesn't even seem genuine. Kyra says in her production clip that uh, this is what I was afraid of, but she's really just verbalizing how I felt anyway, those feelings that I have, and if moving forward with him is a good idea. We have Chris meeting with Amber's immediate family. She's invited two of her siblings and a childhood friend. Chris arrives, they shake hands, and they cheers to the beginning of some questioning. They want to know off the rip how many relationships that he's been in. He says he's been in four relationships and her family thinks that's quite a few, but he says, yeah, I mean, I could understand how you would feel some type of way. I'm feeling the energy across from the table that you really don't like that. And they also want to know with Amber's crazy work schedule, how are you and how will you handle that when she has to give her all into her work? And Chris says, well, you know, I'm going to make sure she doesn't, you know, just become so overwhelmed with work that she has some sort of breakdown she needs to live and be alive and enjoy her life and they like that and they also mentioned that well usually guys you know they are intimidated by that and they feel some sort of competition but Chris says that's all about someone who's intimidated and someone who feels like they can't handle a queen and she's a queen and we I need to make sure that I treat her as such I'm not intimidated by that I'm not in any competition and I don't want to dim her shine she's a star on the flip side we have Joel getting ready to invite Venicia over to meet his niece Butter and his sister uh, BB baby <laughs> 
As soon as they get comfy cozy, the sister jumps right into the important questions and wanting to know, hey, if something were to evolve, you have an older child that's away at school, but as a blended family with the remaining children, you will have a total of five all together in one household. I mean, how does that make you feel? Do you feel some type of way about that? And Vernice explains that she's had to take care of children that weren't her own in the past. So she's all open arms when it comes to taking care of children. That's really important important to her and when she dated she was not the type to just always you know forget about her kids and be engulfed in a man she's all about making sure the children are taken care of so that's something that's just really really important to her and she really likes Joelle and at times she's pretty much territorial they love her vibes, they love her energy, and feel that she's being genuine. After Vernicia leaves, they talk with Joelle and wanted to know his feelings. They say that just judging off of things that she said and her mood and just her vibes, that she's very territorial and that she may just be a little bit more into you than you are into her. And Joelle says that's a that was a concern of mine. That's something that's crossed my mind. And we might be in this infatuation phase, this 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 Google phase. So I I mean, I don't know what to do with that. The niece also mentioned that, yeah, you know, but she seems genuine. But at the same time, Courtney was the same way with you when you two first met. Jason gets an opportunity to sit down with his mom. He gives her a quick briefing about how he met someone special and how her opinion really matters to him. He says in his production clip that when you meet a black man's mama, it's something serious. And if you can get past her, then we are good to go. The mom is really happy to see Jason. She seems really kind hearted and Liz enters the room. She sits down, she introduces herself. Jason lets his mom know that she's really special to him. And the mother dives right in and says, well, how do we feel about money? And Liz says, whoa, we, we hopping right into it, but okay. And she explains a girl Growing up, she was able to go to private schools, but she's no stranger to hardship. She believes in prosperity, but she's not a stranger to hardship. And she knows the struggle that if it got so bad to where they're boiling water <laughs> to use it for things, then she's familiar with that. So and if there's things that need prayer on how to, quote unquote, guide Jason without him knowing that he's guiding, which is the mother's second question, then she will go to God to help her to help him in any way possible because that's something that's important to her her christian faith her christian beliefs and liz says in her production clip that the mom is very awesome that the fact that she's christian and she's grounded and she's asking important questions is really important to her and the whole time liz is, is talking jason is just in awe just looking at her and listening to his newfound goo goo love <laughs> and his mother we then move on to aj and his mom he says in his production clip that his mother's opinion really does matter and he's really really nervous because Kyra and his mom are very very strong individuals and if they bump heads that's gonna be something and he also tells his mom that you know I know we've had our rough patches but your opinion really does matter and I want you to just ask questions that are important when she arrives, when Kyra arrives, she says hello. They have some good energy. They hug. She sits down. And the mother goes straight into it, just saying, hey, you know, it's it's nice to meet you. But I just really want to know what are the things what, that you feel that AJ found really, really great about you um, and to, brought, to bring you here to meet me. Because, you know, there's been a lot of different endeavors in his life. There's been different projects. I mean, he's, he's self-taught when it comes to piano now he's getting into a production and he's had a lot of endeavors in his life and I just want to know is this another endeavor or is, or is he serious because he's 38 and I don't have any grandchildren and Kyra's just like well you know <laughs> since you're asking those questions I mean he you know we have those moments where we bump heads you know and even to this day when we talk about things we bump heads we're still trying to learn and get through that and to be completely honest we actually did date a couple of years ago and even on our first date i end up paying for the date and they share a laugh but the mom is just like oh no i'm old-fashioned i mean that's a big no-no that's like serving five to ten if you you know fit me with the bill like i don't think so but the mom is is making humor of a situation but also trying to learn you know why they bump heads so much and kyra says you know i really don't know why we bump heads it comes up a lot and maybe if we get to know each other more then maybe we can get, get through that and the mother is 
is impressed that she's very strong. She's answering the questions with wholehearted honesty and just looks forward to them maybe building and growing. She sees the potential in something. Kyra says in a production clip, see, this is kind of like a concern to me that the mom mentioned this is like an endeavor in one of his several projects. And hopefully I'm not one of his projects. Our host Tommy explains that through this entire Ready to Love season, we've had 20 individuals who went through dates, went through questions, had ups and downs. We narrowed it down through eliminations. There was drama. There was getaways, resorts. And through it all, we have our final couples who will decide if they will move forward as meaningful, committed relationships or decide to go their separate ways. Which of our four couples are truly ready to love? Vernicia and Joel meet up and Joel is super nervous, but he's ready to express his feelings to her. He tells her that he's choosing her because from the beginning, they've shared something special. They've had those feelings and connections and he's willing to go further with her. But he wants to hear why she chooses him. And she says that for once in her life, she wants to see her children in love and a man loving her just as much. And she knows that she won't replace being a mother to his children, but she wants to be there and vice versa. She's excited to see how they evolve and grow. They kiss and Joel makes a production clip that he's excited to see the potentials of getting to know one another. Chris and Amber meet up and Chris expresses to her that when they had the opportunity to get to know one another, it was shocking that they shared such a connection and they vibed off of so many things. And just from that, their connections and all of the possibilities and her being the goddess that she is, he chooses her. Amber smiles and says, wow, you know, when we had the opportunity to meet one another, you know, we really didn't get a chance to talk at the beginning, but as we started to talk a little bit more, like you just said we have that connection and we were just drawn to one another it was genuine everything that was around us there wasn't any anything faked it was just just real it was just you and I and for that I choose you too and they kiss and they love the moment and they have that that moment of finally this process can move on and Chris makes a production clip that man thank goodness I'm finally connected with somebody and I can at least have the opportunity to see where this goes Kyra says in her production clip that throughout this entire process, AJ and her have had their ups and downs. And through that process, she hasn't focused just on AJ. She hopes that he doesn't hold that against her because still to this day, she hasn't said, AJ, I choose you or that AJ, I would prefer to be with you and you only. As Kyra enters the room, AJ is playing the piano and the room is decorated full of roses and candlelight. AJ expresses himself, letting her know that from the beginning there was some static, but through it all, they were able to talk things through, get to know one another, go on dates, maybe have their little tit for taps here and there, but they got through it, but it's all a process. And even his mother joked about buying a lottery ticket because chances like this and things happening and AJ making these important decisions was just a struck of luck, so maybe she should just play the lotto. They share a quick laugh and he lets her know that he's choosing her and he wants to move forward in developing some sort of relationship. Kyra takes a beat and says, well, you know, I really do care for you and I like you a lot. But unfortunately, I just feel like today, right now, I'm not ready to move forward and say, I want to be your girlfriend. I don't want you to feel like I'm being on genuine that I'm not being real with you. It's just I'm not really feeling that for me right now. Kyra makes a production clip that she doesn't want to be untrue. She doesn't want to be dishonest and she wants to move forward with making decisions. So she chose Kyra. AJ makes his production clip saying that he came to this process wanting to be committed to someone. And even though things didn't turn out the way that they did, he felt that he made his decision based upon how he felt and he has no regrets. And of course, we got Jason and Liz. You know, they love each other. They getting married next week. It's all goo goo and gaga and boo boo and bye bye. And y'all, that is the end <laughs> of this season. It was the season finale. And the next thing to come, you guys, is the reunion special, right? So that was the end of this episode. Ready to love. Stay tuned for my review. Woo! 
So this season finale was okay, okay, I guess. AJ, you played the wrong song, bruh. You should have been playing until the end of time. I'll be there for you. I'm too weak to define just what you mean to me. Should have been playing that song. And you know, no matter what Kyra was feeling or thinking, Something would happen. I'm just saying. Listen to your girl, Bunny. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, you can't go wrong with some Prince. You, I mean, you can play any Prince song, any Prince song, and she probably would have been singing another tune. That's all I'm saying. Anywho, this season finale was like blah to the blah to blah blah the blah blah. That 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 fake kiss between Joel and Vernicia. You notice when they kiss, they don't move. Like they don't move. They just freeze. Now freeze. Everybody clap your hands. Not them two. They just gonna be still and hit the mannequin challenge on you. Did you see that their, their, their kisses are like that? That's that's not passion to me. That's not passion. That's not realness. Amber and Chris. Yeah, like I said from the beginning, Amber is a hippie. You know, the, the thought of love and its process is cool. But Chris seems like he would be, she would get really bored with Chris really, really soon. She seemed like she would get, I think she's bored with him now. Um, His little, his little, you know, the little dances that he does. She doesn't, she doesn't even really entertain that. Uh, You know, he says one thing and does another. You know, he's just like, oh, I'm just so excited. He's giddy with her. But Amber, it's like she has an interest in him, but it's not a goo goo gaga kind of interest you know what i'm saying uh let's let's move on to to what a lot of people aren't talking about okay so jason and liz they're pretty much goo goo over each other right they're in awe of each other they're skipping down a rain build uh <laughs> rainbow street holding hands they both love god and all this yay and all this good stuff which is great i'm happy for them i'm happy for them but um they're in this infatuation stage. And one thing that I noticed that Jason said was, you know, I just I just can't believe all these good men, you know, they passed her up and all this good, you know, how could you let a good woman go like this? She's amazing, she's beautiful, which is true. That just explains that when you have good qualities, when you have these things, people tend to overlook the good stuff that's with, with you know, a person. And they don't look into what they need in the relationship. Jason came in with an athletic point of view and saying I'm, I, I want to, to go ahead and come, you know, see and, 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 and conquer whatever the situation is and he did. But what people are forgetting is that Jason was gung-ho about Kyra. You know, that, that fork in the road was not only the budgeting but her really kind of really not saying it's all about you. People are forgetting it was a fork in the road when David acted the way that he acted. Liz was not falling head over heels for Jason like that until David did what he did. So it's kind of like their love is a, this is what I was looking for in the person. And this person fulfills that. If you get where I'm coming from, then you're feeling me, right? They are both seeing what they wanted in the other person. Now, a lot of people, I'm probably going to have a lot of comments and saying, Bunny, you're wrong. This is real. This is, tell me it's real. The feeling that we feel. Okay, look, I get it. Sometimes we have a certain image in mind of what we want a person to be. Then another person can come into the picture, which is what happened that fulfilled what they were looking for in the other person. Jason fulfills what she was looking for in David. Liz fulfills what Jason was looking for in Kyra. Okay? There were hiccups along the way that merged them together. They're all saying the right things. Everything's right. Everything's perfect. I just don't feel as if it's going to be long lived, long lived between these two. Just my opinion. The same thing with Chris and Amber. I don't think that's going to be long lived. The same thing with Joel and Vernicia. I don't think that's going to be long lived. The fact that Vernicia says she's not territorial 
And then she says, well, you know, I'm territorial. And that still kind of bothers Joel. I think he's going through the motions and just doesn't want to hurt Venetia's feelings. Because even the sister and the niece, right? BB and Butter, right? <laughs> you know that's country if you don't even introduce your government name. You know, you just, I'm Bunny, how you doing? Like, first of all, <laughs> I ain't about to call no grown man delicious. Can I get a real name? But I guess not. Um, but when they said, hey, you know, she seems like she's more into you than you are to her. Like, here are the errors with this show. And I've said this so many times. And this episode proved what I've been saying this whole season. When Tommy's not involved, when there's not a host, and you're letting individuals just behave the way that they naturally behave and talk to each other and have dinners and all that, the show flows, right? We forgot all about Tommy until he popped in and was just like, we started out with 20, 20 individuals. You know, and we're like, oh, yeah, hey, Tommy, how you doing? We really don't need him. It needs to be a setup where it's just a big house with a whole bunch of cameras, people going on dates, and maybe some have, maybe them having a sort of elimination process through confessional videos. And then maybe them having a drop box, you know what I'm saying? Putting the names in, who the guys ain't feeling, who the women ain't feeling, and each person can just go home. It's a van that scooped them up and take them to the airport. That would be more entertaining because then you have a time where people can start being them their genuine selves and we got a taste of that at the resort we saw venicia act a certain type of way raising her voice and and, and saying well i thought it, da, 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 da. we saw the real her come out we saw a lot of personalities start to come out because they don't have to get dressed and prepared for production because they got to sit down with tommy every five minutes because you're interrupting the fluidity of how they can get to know one another and hopefully somebody will take my idea and make that happen in the next uh, series. Hopefully they'll do it with the next season, excuse me, with Washington. But if not, maybe the season after that can be somewhere tropical, fun, in the sun. And people can just be adults and do what they do. I don't think it's cool that the show pressures a relationship. It should just be them making selections and saying, you know what? I really want to continue to date this person and get to know them. Because you're pushing me into a committed relationship. Are you serious? The only thing that I agree with Kyra about is when she said that I'm just going to be honest, like, I just don't, you know, I'm not feeling this. If she's not feeling it, she's not feeling it. How are you going to force somebody to be with somebody just because they getting along? Like, that's just boo to me. I mean, your mama and all that, like me and somebody's parents, me and somebody's family is a real deal. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a southerner. You know what I mean? I'm I'm country as hell, okay? And introducing somebody to your family is a big deal. You only bring in those people around that you are serious and getting to know deeper or you already at that point to where you're thinking about taking it to the next level of commitment and then possibly marriage, okay? It may differ from coast to coast. You know, I don't know. I'm just saying. But the fact that you expect me to jump into a ready-made something, ready to love, it should be ready to date, ready to kick it, ready to learn you, ready to something. It, clearly, they're, they're ready for something. But leaving in a committed relationship to me seems a bit off because if you think about production time and how long they film which is i think six to eight weeks that's not that long you guys that's not that long have you uh thought about the fact that even though you're you know you're seeing people and you're seeing them every day and you're shooting and you're meeting like kyra's friend said i really don't think you guys know each other you know, I really don't think you guys, ha you know, have have wiped off the rep the representative right of yourselves and invited the new you. Jason and Liz get along great. They're God fearing. They're blah blah blah. That's cool. Um, clearly, a lot of sexual tension on Jason's end. Let's see how long he can hold out on not being intimate with Liz because he's kissing her every five minutes. OK, I just don't feel like any of the couples that are left are genuine, true relationships. It looks good on camera, but I just don't. It's, it's, it's a lot of scripted stuff. You know, you got everybody matching, you know, if there's supposed to be some surprise and they just, you know, they, they sitting there 
<laughs> you know, looking onto the lake and somebody walks behind. It's like, oh, you're behind me? Oh, I had no idea. I didn't hear your footsteps. You know, it's like, come on. It should just be genuine. It should just be them being them genu- their, their genuine selves, them, them chillaxing, choosing where they go out on dates. Not this setup of a fake house and a fake living room and the rest of the house is empty. No pictures of yourself, no degrees on the wall. Just the fakeness is killing me. Have them bring luggage. Have it like a real real world set up, uh, uh, a big brother, big, big sister, whatever. Whatever you want to call it, cool. Make it like that. Heck, college hell, I don't care. And they need to bring that back. But anywho, have it to where people can just show their real their real selves. And, and after the entire process, you make those decisions on who you want to date. And if you're dating, who says you have to date one person? You have to have options. There's nothing wrong with that. The big error to me with Western society is putting so much pressure and commitment. You have to get to know one another. The the constant comments that we see throughout each season, you're this age, you have a good head on your shoulders, you have a good career, why aren't you married? Why hasn't anybody scooped you up? Why, here's my question, is there a time frame and so much pressure for a woman to do all of those things and still have enough time to do blank, 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 blank. It's like the superwoman of all superwomen. You know what I mean? Here you are asking Amber, you know, Chris's, Chris's brother, you're asking Amber, who's an accomplished lawyer, which takes time in itself, okay, to go through school, go through law school, passing the bar, all this other stuff, and even a lawyer, but you're minimizing all of that and saying, why hasn't anybody scooped you? For one, she's been busy as hell, for one. <laughs> and like she said, the real question should be, why haven't I allowed that? You know, these are important questions and these are important dating questions that we have to ask. We have to critique the way that we're dating and the way that people are getting married. You know, you have to do this, 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 this in in, in five years. Or you have to do blank, 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 blank in this short amount of time. It's all messed up. And I think that when it comes to dating and getting to know a person, you have to be on the same page of life goals. When it comes to life goals, because in life, right, people have different fluidities and journeys of when they do stuff. I mean, I know people, friends of mine, who started off doing one thing, you know, and are completely doing another career now. They wanted kids, now they don't want them. Or I've had friends that do it the exact opposite. They never thought they said they would want kids, but their career has done something else. And they said, well, you know, maybe I have the time and the dedication. I'm, you know, now I'm thinking about children. It's all about life goals. And do you even know yourself well enough to date? We got all of these shows, put a ring on it and, and all this other stuff, trying to force something that's not there. If we're having conversations about putting the ring on it, marry me, it's like putting the epitome and the main trophy of life of is marriage. And that is a big no-no to me. That out of all the things that to accomplish in the world, the best accomplishment a woman can do is get married. Or the best thing or the thing that makes a man this is making money, you know, and then looking for a wife. You know, and people Christians, you know, we'll throw that scripture around. Oh, man, that findeth the wife is a good thing. That's true. Right? But that's something. Key word, find. (laughs) It's a journey. It's a process. Not do this, blah, 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 blah. And in four years, and and then have this kid. and Like, to me, that's not really living. That is, you have an agenda and it sounds like a work schedule to me. The show itself, Ready to Love, is a good concept of putting a lot of accomplished, beautiful black people together who are dating, who are this, who are that, which is beautiful, right? Because if you look at our numbers, if you look at statistics of men, black men, and the statistical, st- statistical ratio with black women, there's, those numbers are really, really low. When it comes to systemic and systematic racism, right, we have to look at all of these things that bring in factors why a lot of black women will not be married to a black man, okay? Everybody want a black man. A black man is a hot commodity, honey. It's like the best stock that's just soaring to the top of the moon. You know what I'm saying? But then you got to look at the numbers, 
women outweigh men when it comes to numbers and when it comes to stats. Okay, that's just a fact. When we bring in ethnicity, those numbers really start to get chopped, 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 chopped down. Then we talk about men and women making a certain amount of money. Then we talking about men and women who don't have kids. Then we talking about men. Come on. So dating options open, having fun and not forcing this commitment and changing the way we see relationships, the way things are done should be the epitome of this show should be the epitome of understanding. It's okay to date. And if I'm coming out of a marriage and I've been married 11 years and I have three kids, right? Getting into the swing of dating again. So you mean to tell me that all of those contestants that are on ready to love that were in those committed marriages that have children, they're being pushed and kicked again into being in another committed relationship. They need to learn how to date first. (laughs) They need to learn what's going on out there, right? They need to learn about, okay, you know, a complete committed relationship. Are you ready to introduce those people to your children? Can we talk about the kids? Do the kids have no say in this? I love the intention of the show. I just don't like, I, I love everything except the pressure of committing to someone when it comes to a production. I think that's whack. This might as well be 90 Day Fiance if you want to take it there. What's the difference? What's the difference? That's only one more step talking about marriage. And, you know, those people are choosing those people. I, I get that. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but I want you to feel me on this, right? 90-day fiancé, they have to make a decision in 90 days when they get to see the real person. Is this something that they want to commit to? Is this something that they really want to get to know? We're ready to love. You would think that the following season would be where are they now? And are they dating? And has that dating led into a committed relationship? The title is correct with ready to love, but the fluidity and the intentions of how they're selecting each other is not. Um, <clears throat> if it were real, more people would be self-eliminating themselves if they were honest. Because you also have to factor in people who are opportunist and they just want to be on TV or they just want to promote their business. And that's the truth. I'll see y'all <laughs> when we have the reunion special. If you are new to this channel, make sure you check out everything from episode one. I have been 100% accurate this entire season. I said that I honestly feel that no matter who picks each other at the end, none of the couples are true matches because there's no genuine crust that we can work with. All right. Well, on this channel, you know, I always say after this reunion special for both of the series, you know, when one show ends, another one takes its place. The shows will keep going and going and going. I have had some people ask me, hey, can you review put a love, put a ring on it? But it's so predictable and a waste of my time. I will not be reviewing that because I could summarize everything in five minutes. Minutes, What's going to happen? Um, the dude that was with Goody Mob. <laughs> that's on there why the guy that has no hairline is talking about he not getting married because he feel like he still want to soil his role or old oh, trash everybody on there need counseling forget the marriage that the marriage the marriage look the marriage is a piece of paper forget that okay the piece of paper doesn't change anything all of those people need individual counseling period not even dealing with marriage but just dealing with issues and as individual and that's it. And then the whole throw the throw the whole show away. Just throw it away. Anywho, uh, like this video, share. Uh, pardon the the um, the time of when I posted this. I was just so frustrated with this entire season. I was like, oh dang, I forgot I needed to do this review. Ah. Anyway, take care of yourself and each other. Until next time, I'll see ya. Amen.